So guys, this is my boa constrictor. She's just over a year old, and she's a just a normal boa constrictor. She's just reached about four feet now, and like I said, I, I couldn't pass it up. Boa constrictors are my favorite snake next to uh, reticulated pythons, but I'd never be able to keep a reticulated python as they are illegal here in British Columbia, which is a bit of a bummer, but you know, nonetheless, I get to I get to collect boa constrictors instead. <laughs> I uh, hope to expand my collection of boa constrictors in the future, but it might have to wait as uh, I don't think my landlord wants any more snakes in this house, so I'm gonna hold off. I'm just gonna focus on my le leopard gecko collection for a while, but uh, I just love the the saddles on boa constrictors' backs. Um, she's she's a super inquisitive snake. She uh, she always looks right in people's faces. She she watches me walk around the room, and. Uh, I mean, I can just go into her terrarium and pet her on the head, and she usually doesn't shy away from me too much. I can stick my fingers right in her face, and she's never never really got a problem with that. And I just... Very, very personable snakes, boa constrictors. I think they're very intelligent, and I, I just love boas. But that's my two snakes that I have at the moment. I definitely will expand my collection of snakes probably more so towards the boa constrictors than ball pythons, but uh, nonetheless, that's who I have right now. Moving on to the bearded dragons. Alright guys, so first of the two bearded dragons that I have, I, I adopted these guys. This is, uh, this is Z. He's, uh, he's actually got a little bit of shed coming off his face right now, but they are awesome. They're very, very, uh, chill. They, I mean, if you guys have been watching, I, uh, I've been working on fattening this guy up. He's really skinny. As you can see, these bones are kind of protruding here. He's definitely put on some weight since I've had him, but, uh, he, he's just, he had a rough time, and when I got him, it, it was, he was, uh, he was definitely in rough shape, and I'm pretty sure they both had MBD, metabolic bone disease, if you don't know. Um, and that comes from not having an, the right source of light, not being able to metabolize the food that he's eating. So I got a proper bulb with UVB so that he's getting the light he needs, as a lot of lizards that are, um, that are, not nocturnal, sorry, I got a little bit confused for a second. The uh, lizards that are awake during the day, they uh, a lot of them have what's called a third eye, and it's kind of like a, a scale on the top of their head that lets light in, and if they're not getting the proper light source above them, they're not going to be metabolizing food correctly, they're not, they'll end up, I mean, the first time I fed him crickets, his first poop was a bunch of whole crickets. I couldn't believe it. They were still whole. But, um, as soon as I got that new light bulb over him and got him eating again, he's going for his vegetables like he wasn't before, and the his he's been having proper poops, like they look the way they're supposed to, and he's been putting on weight, so I'm pretty happy. So we're going to move on to the girl that he's living with right now. I'm probably going to uh, separate these two, but at the moment it's uh, not quite a priority um, as I don't quite have everything set up. I, and they've lived their entire lives together for uh, at least four or five years. So this is nothing new to them. They're used to each other. They don't really fight with each other. I just like to be able to monitor how much food the two of them are getting because she seems to be fat. So we'll go grab her. All right, guys. So here we have Frank, and Frank, she's she's the big girl of the two, definitely. And as I was saying before about them having MBD, 
this uh, front leg here, as you can see, these toes, they look a little they look a little gibbled compared to this foot. They're uh, kind of curled off and went off that way, kind of. But this leg before was probably about two times as thick as it is now. It was so swollen, you couldn't tell where the foot began and the leg ended. I, it was really sad to see. She's, she's a great eater. She's, she's a pig, pretty much. She eats everything you put in front of her. And they're both very handleable, which is great. But I couldn't believe how bad her foot was looking. But since I've had her, I've been keeping them very clean. And, you know, putting some healing aid and stuff on it. And her, the swelling's almost gone completely down. It's, I mean, the leg is pretty much the same size as her other leg now. And their pattern is coming out better on their backs. That, like, everything about them is just looking better. So, I, uh, I'm pretty happy about that. I mean, it, it was kind of disheartening. I, I kind of felt like the male might pass away any day. And I felt like her leg was gonna, like, I don't know, just... I felt like her leg was in really, really big trouble. And just to see them both looking up since I've had them, and it's only been a short while, uh, it's really, really good to see. But that's just, you know, the importance of researching your reptiles. If you don't do your research, if you just think you know what's going on, uh, you're, you're mistaken. That's all I have to say. And, and even me, I've had my leopard geckos. I've been keeping leopard geckos for two years. I know how to care for them, but I still research on the internet every so often. I just read, reread things that I already know just to, just to refresh things in my memory and do, just make sure I, I'm not getting, uh, not just ignoring things because it's been the way I've been doing things. Uh, yeah, it's just how I am, I guess. I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd. I read a lot. But those are the beardies. Next, we'll move out to the living room and I'll show you my planted aquariums. Alright, guys, so this is my 30-gallon tank that I've had planted for... Uh, I forget how long, but I'll say in the description how long this tank's been set up. But if you... Uh, Check the link that I'm gonna, or the video that I'm gonna put a uh, link to right here. The uh, it's gonna be the pretty much when I set it up and like this sword here was about that high off the bottom. All this, every plant in here was tiny when I put it in, and it's just huge. Everything like my grass was from the edge of the screen there to the other edge of the screen, that's all those places that it had grown. And it's starting to fill in underneath all these plants over here and pretty much all the way to the other end of the tank now, which was awesome. If you got your grass growing in a planted tank, you're doing something right because it gets the least light of any of your plants. All these java ferns have gotten huge. And I mean, if you've got enough plant growth in a tank, Algae doesn't even grow. I haven't cleaned algae off the inside of this tank in weeks. This is back here is Bacopa, Bacopa monieri, I think it's called. And uh, it's a very slow growing plant. I think it's probably better as a low growing plant, but it's just kind of a background back there. And then I've got some water sprite up there. This is a red flame sword. That one in the back's a normal Amazon sword. And this is an ocelot sword. Or I think I might have gotten the Ocelot Sword and the Red Flame Sword mixed up. But then I have in the center here my Tiger Lotus, a Red Tiger Lotus, which grows right to the top of the tank, big lily pads kind of thing, and it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm really excited to see it flower one day. But I've got some a pair of Dwarf Garamis in here, there's one, and the other, and then I've got some Guppies. and. I used to have some invertebrates. I had a uh, a red mini uh, lobster crayfish, and then I had some uh, ghost shrimp and stuff. But the ghost shrimp all passed away, and same with the uh, 
lobster. But I had them for a fairly long time, and they don't exactly have the longest life cycle of any aquarium animal. But that's my 30 gallon, now we'll move on to the hex. Alright guys, so this is my hexagon tank. I kind of use it as just like a, a, a guppy tank, as I have a lot of guppies here. I'm probably gonna end up getting rid of them. I, I'm not a big fan of guppies, I might just keep some males all by themselves, because I, I just... I don't want to deal with the number of guppy fry that end up coming out in your tanks, but I've got some plants and stuff. I mean, there's some crypts, some uh, Lugwigia glandulosa, and another red flame sword right here. And I was given some plants that are just floating in the tank up here, and they uh, ended up bringing some snails into my tank. As you can see, there's these little snails like that on the glass right right there at the end of my finger that's a snail there's one on the leaf there they're all over the place they're kind of annoying but they don't seem to do anything to my tanks other than eat some of the algae so I, I, I don't know I don't care but that's my hexagon tank planted dirt and that's it so we're gonna move on to Darwin I'm gonna have to take a little drive so we'll shut off the camera and I'll show you my axolotl. And last but not least we have my axolotl Darwin. Axolotls are a uh, species of salamander from Mexico. They're closely related to tiger salamanders except that they stay in their larval form for their entire life. And that has to do with the fact that the uh, couple lakes that they're from in Mexico are uh, the land around them is fairly inhospitable and they're at a high altitude so the uh, the over time the salamanders that stayed in their larval form were the ones that survived so evolution said that it was time for them to stay this way so you get their nice gills that you only see on the larval salamanders of their species they're an ambistoma species which means a mole salamander and they're really cool they can regenerate limbs, their tail, even apparently parts of their brain and heart. Scientists have actually done, um, they've given some axolotls what's called a green fluorescent protein. I'll just get around here and show his tail. And the green fluorescent protein, or GFP, those axolotls glow neon green under a black light. It's really cool. And they use that to study gene fate. So, if anybody uh, has never seen an axolotl before, I really suggest them as a pet. They're the coolest thing to keep in an aquarium, in my opinion. Way cooler than fish. But that's my collection. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one, guys.